go. Okay, by way of introduction, we've just finished the three lesson one shoulder maneuvers that start the lesson. And now we do a movement that Tom Hanna used the word orbiting to describe. And it's a, a kinetic mirroring move in which the client is entirely passive and we give a person a sense of freedom of movement in the shoulder, which they probably have not had for quite some time. And so what we're doing here is pressing in and lifting up and drawing out. Now that's in general the pattern of the move. I'm just showing you that. Now the move itself involves the full range of angles of which the shoulder is capable. And so although we start, say, going in straight in toward the spine, we then migrate in the following fashion, as if we are visualizing a clock at which the central pivot of the hands is right at the shoulder joint. We're going to be doing a movement along this line, and then along this line, and then along this line, so that we're actually traversing all angles, roughly, of the of the clock face. And so if we go in and lift up, that's straight in. The next move might be a bit toward the neck and then more north and then out. And then instead of drawing up and lifting out, we're now going over the top and coming down and out. We've just gone 180 degrees from the original starting point. And so what we're doing here again is giving the person a sense of freedom of movement along all directions. So let's narrate that a little bit. And now if this is 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, we start by going under toward 9 and lifting out toward 3 and then say going towards between 10 and 11 and coming out between 4 and 5 and then 12 to 6 and then 2.30 to 7.30 and then 3 to 9. You see how we're doing this. Now the person may have an involuntary tendency to hold on or to help the movement, uh, neither of which we particularly want because we want them to have a sense of what no effort feels like in that movement. If a person, say, doesn't really let go freely, let's say that the shoulder hangs right around here and you can tell that the pull is toward here, one thing you might do is kinetic mirroring in which you bring them in and have them do a couple of breaths while they let everything go. Then we do the mirroring part by letting them come out. And then we test again. We make sure that this shoulder drops completely freely during the movement. And if you, in the process of doing this, you notice that they catch on in a certain position. Let's say they caught here. They can't really let go, so we go in toward what they can't let go. And the same thing, a couple of breaths. And then we come back out again. And we will typically find that that's sufficient for them to let go of these habitual holding patterns. Now, the addition of kinetic mirroring is not something Tom Hanna taught us. It's something that I spontaneously started doing when I encountered people being a little hung up. And it's just a little bit of a clean-up operation for something that the basic three green light shoulder maneuvers should have accomplished by way of teaching freedom, but maybe they need a little bit more. So those are my comments on orbiting the shoulder. Uh. All right, so the addition of moments of kinetic mirroring to the shoulder orbiting process is not something that Tom Hanna introduced to us. It's something that I spontaneously started doing when I could feel that a person 
was hung up in a particular direction of the shoulder orbiting movement. In general, we would expect that the three shoulder maneuvers and lock-ins of the lesson one would be sufficient for a person to come free in the shoulder girdle, but sometimes just not the case. They need a little additional instruction as to what freedom of movement feels like and how they can let that area go. So those are my comments on shoulder orbiting. But okay. And I'm going to touch your neck a little bit. Okay. Well, there's a bit through here. But it's not a huge... Let's see something about your shoulders. 